Hello. In this video, we are going to show how to use the program Microsoft Excel to visualize the uh, eigenfunctions of the rigid rotor or particle on a ring problem. Now, the fully normalized eigenfunctions for this situation are square root of 1 over 2 pi, that's our normalization factor, times e to the i c m sub l, where i is the imaginary number, c is the angle that the uh, particle makes uh, with the center as it follows around the ring, and m sub l is the quantum number. And the m sub l's are going to be integers. So it's 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. Now we begin a new worksheet. In cell B1, we type apostrophe angle underscore ink. This is going to be the uh, number of divisions, subdivisions of our ring. So in cell B2, we put the actual value, and I've used 50. Cell C1, we type apostrophe ML. That's the quantum number M sub L. And the actual value is going to be in cell C2. Where we start out zero. For later purposes, in cell D1, we're going to put apostrophe m sub l2, and then in cell D2, we have that second uh, example of a quantum number, and we're going to put the number one there. Then in cell E1, we have apostrophe capital N, so that's a normalization constant, and in cell E2, we have the formula for that, so that's one over the square root of two pi. So in cell C5, we type apostrophe. So to make the Greek letter, we simply type in the Roman small f and then uh, change it to the symbol font. Cell C6 is the number zero, so that's the lowest value of C when we begin our sweep around. In cell C7 equals C6 plus pi divided by dollar sign B dollar sign 2. So that's going to increment the, uh, the value of B. And then by copying C7 uh, from C8 to 106, that will give us all the values to go one complete revolution around the ring. In cell D5, we have apostrophe psi 1. That's our first eigenfunction. Cell D6 is the formula equals dollar sign E dollar sign 2 times cosine of dollar sign C dollar sign 2 times C6. So the dollar sign E part is the normalization constant. The uh, dollar sign C, dollar sign 2, is the M sub L value for the first function. In cell E5, we do the same thing, but now for psi 2. In cell E6, we have equals dollar sign E, dollar sign 2. Again, normalization constant. But now we have the cosine, dollar sign D, dollar sign 2, which is the second M sub L value. And then we copy the formula in cell E6 from E7 to E106. And that will give us the values of the second eigenfunction at any particular angle. So now to visualize the data for the first eigenfunction, we left click on cell C5, and then we drag while holding down the left mouse button to cell D106. Then we go up to the top and click insert then scatter chart and then we'll notice that there's a num number of little pictures of charts and we want to click on the chart that's on the top row on the far right and um, once we've made our chart 
we can go back and change which particular eigenfunction is displayed in that chart simply by changing the value of cell C2 to another integer. And then you'll notice if you go to the chart, the chart will have changed uh, updating based upon uh, the value that you have in cell C2. And when we plot the uh, eigenfunction for m sub l being equal to zero, we get this particular plot, which is not a particularly fascinating looking curve, but we end up getting a constant value. In this one case, we actually are uh, graphing the entire wave function. In general, we're gonna just be looking at the real part of the wave function because that's going to be easier to graph than both the real part and the imaginary part. So now for m sub l equals 1, we're just plotting the real part of the wave function. And we notice that in this particular case, the real part of the wave function has two nodes. We know our general idea is that the greater the number of nodes, the higher the kinetic um, energy that's involved with Here is the wave function, a real part of the wave function, when we have the quantum number m sub l being equal to 2. Notice now we're up to four nodes. Nodes are anywhere where the wave function goes through 0 from positive to negative or from negative to positive. And last but not least, we're right here, we have the real part of the wave function when the quantum number m sub l is equal to four. Now we would like to be able to visualize that eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues are orthogonal. Type in cell G5 apostrophe B. In cell G6, we type the number zero. You're gonna notice that this is repetitious from what we did before. This isn't the most elegant way to do it, but it is the most simple and straightforward. In cell G7, we type the formula equals G6 plus pi divided by dollar sign b dollar sign 2. We copy uh, cell G7 from G8 to G106. Cell H5, we put apostrophe uh, psi 1 star psi 2. In cell H6, we have the formula equals D6 times E6. So it just multiplies the values um, of the two different eigenfunctions and then puts it in that cell. And then we copy H6 from H7 to H106. So now to visualize this data, similar to what we did before, but now we left click on cell G5, we drag down to cell H106 while we keep holding down the left mouse button. Then we go up to the toolbar at the top, we clip, uh, click insert, then scatter chart. And then we notice that a number of little pictures of charts come up and we want the one that's on the top row to the far right. 
And then if we want to show the orthogonality of other pairs of eigenfunctions, we can go back and just change the values in cells C2 and D2, just making sure that they have different integer values. And you'll notice that the chart that you created before will now have updated uh, using the new M sub L data that you put in. Here is the product when m sub l is equal to zero and m sub l is equal to one. Notice that if we shade the area above the x-axis as it's dark gray and the area below as light gray, we notice that it's pretty easy to see that the areas of each of these regions is exactly equal. Since we count the area underneath the x-axis as a negative area, the sum total here is going to be equal to zero, which is the definition of orthogonality. Here we have the product when m sub l is equal to 0 and equal to 2. Again, the area above the x-axis we show as a dark gray, the area below the x-axis as light gray, and that if we add up these areas between phi being equal to zero and two pi, we notice that they exactly cancel out, showing that those two eigenfunctions are orthogonal to each other. we get a slightly more interesting looking curve when now we have the product of the wave functions when m sub l is equal to one and m sub l is equal to two. So notice the small region above the x-axis is dark gray, below the x-axis is light gray. And at least for these regions so far, it's quite clear that they have equal and opposite uh, areas so that these are going to cancel out. So just for this region itself, the wave, the um, integral is equal to zero. So now for the second region, we notice again, above the x-axis is dark gray, below is light gray, and that these regions also cancel out. So we add up all the regions above and all the regions below, they exactly cancel out because the wave functions when m sub l is equal to one and when m sub l is equal to two are orthogonal to each other. Here is the product for the m sub l is equal to 1 and m sub l equal to 3. Now this one isn't anywhere near as obvious as the previous one, but again, we have the area above X as dark gray, the area below X as light gray, and these regions actually do exactly cancel out to give us an overall area, an integral of zero.
for our final orthogonality example, we have the product of the wave functions when m sub l is equal to 2 and m sub l is equal to 3. may be difficult to see, but we have these four small regions. I changed the color around here so that the below x is the dark gray and the above x is light gray, but it's easy to see by the shapes that these particular regions themselves, at least, cancel out to an overall area of zero. Now we have this second region, that's essentially the largest loops we have here, showing the above x as dark gray, that below x as light gray, and it's easy to see if you put the regions at the left and the right above x together, that's going to be exactly equal to the shape that we get below the x-axis in the center. So these regions cancel out as well. Now for the third and final regions, we notice these kind of intermediate loops above the x-axis are light gray, those below the x-axis are dark gray, and it's quite easy to see that these regions are exactly the same shape, same size, they're congruent to each other. So therefore, uh, we had three different sets of regions, all of which cancel out. So if you add zero plus zero plus zero, the overall integral is going to be equal to zero, showing that the eigenfunctions with m sub l equal to 2 and m sub l equal to 3 really are orthogonal to each other. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.